On January 21, 2019, Muslims in Mindanao voted overwhelmingly in favor of greater autonomy for the conflict-ridden and poverty-racked regions in the southern Philippines. The positive outcome of the referendum has raised real hopes for permanent peace and put an end to the protracted conflict which has claimed the lives of more than 150,000 people. Ang hiling ko po na naway sa aming magpayapa na lamang ang tao dito mamamaya pa na mamamalagi na palang normal na walang kinatatakutan. But can permanent peace be achieved in southern Philippines? 52-year-old widow Wen Salim has been a victim of the unending conflict for years. Her husband, mom and dad have all died while trying to flee the conflict during the heavy gun battles between the government and the rebel forces. Ang pinakamahirap yung namamasuka at nag, nag, nagsasabay yung basuka at saka yung nasa ganta at noong dito sa naglilipadan yung mga plane, naghuhulog ng organic ma'am, nagbubumba, ganitong oras. Yun, takot-takot na takot kami. Since the early 1970s, Muslim rebels in the southern Philippines have been waging a rebellion against the government of the Philippines in their desire to create their own separate and independent homeland called Bangsamoro. Her husband died in an evacuation center following the war between local rebels and the Philippines military. Ang sabi niya, Dai, alagaan mo yung mga anak natin at kung maglalakad man ako, sabi niya na hindi na ako makabali, alagaya, alagaan mo yung mga anak natin. Hindi na ako nakapagsalita kasi ang sabi ko, hindi ka pa mamamatay. At kung mamamatay ka man, anong gagawin namin? Iiwan mo kami na hindi, wala akong alam talaga na magtarwaho ng ganyan, ganyan magtitinda, maglalaho. Yun ang pinakamasakit sa buhay ko. Parati, araw-araw, gabi-gabi, may marinig ka talaga na putok. Kagabi, tulad ng kagabi, meron din. This is what 24-year-old Noraima has been going through for the last 10 years at least. Her house was burnt to ashes during the fighting. And Noraima, who's been moving from one place to another, says that she's always ready to flee again to safer zones. Oh, parang kasi matagal na, almost 10 years na parang nakasanayan na namin. Maka, makarinig ka ng putok, mag ka na agad-agad. Kung anong kailangan, pag bigas, kumot, trapal, luna, dalhin mo. Ang pinakamasakit na parte sa nangyari sa amin ay wala kaming bahay, wala kaming magandang hanap buhay. Isang ay, isang umaga, naghingi ng almusal, wala kaming maibigay sa kanila dahil wala pa. Nangungutang lang sa mga ibang tao na mayroon. Despite the war, the people who are caught in the middle of the conflict, like Wen Salim, still call this place home. She's unwilling to uproot herself from her land, even though her children have all fled the area. Gaya nang pumunta ka dyan sa, walang, sa mga kanyugan na walang nagkukontro sa'yo. Gaya nang naglalakad na wala kang kinatatakutan maliban sa Diyos. Mga tao dito, lakas nilang loob na sinusulong ang kahirapan dito. Ako pa kaya? na mag-isa lang ay kaya nga hindi sila sumama sa akin takot sila di okay lang tinitiis ko po kahit na masakit Finally, on July 26, 2018 Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte signed the Bangsamoro Organic Law The signing signifies the growing determination on both sides to put an end to the bloody conflict and give peace a real chance to succeed Under the deal the rebel forces will have to give up their goal of an independent state in exchange for broad autonomy. Their 30,000 to 40,000 fighters will also have to be demobilized. We are hoping that the region will be able to catch up with the rest of the region and then life of people will improve uh, because of the development and maybe if there is peace then Investors will come in and then uh, we expect that there will be uh, opportunities for job for our people. The BOL will not guarantee just and lasting peace 
Philippines in Mindanao. It is just a single step towards a thousand mile journey to peace in Mindanao. There's a great possibility that another rebel group will emerge out of the current situation because there are still some elements in the area who are dissatisfied with the gains of the peace process because they feel that the Bangsamoro organic law has been uh, diminished. The challenge now rests on the Moro Islamic Liberation Front as it prepares for the tough task of running its transitional government for the next three years. The bigger tasks facing the new Bangsa Moro Transitional Authority is to achieve inclusive, sustained economic development in the region, managing the expectations of the people who are looking for a better future. And that includes Hamid, a former BIFF rebel. Hamid, not his real name, joined the BIFF in 2011. It's only recently that he decided to give up the fight. He feels that the family has suffered enough and the time has now come for him to turn over a new leaf. He's hoping that the new organic law will help alleviate the financial strain that the family is facing. But if the new local government fails to deliver on its promises, the extremist militant groups will be waiting in the wings to tap on the local grievances and avail themselves to win new followers to their cause. We should make this work. This is probably one of the last chances that we have to make this work. And I think the ingredients to make it work will be there. Otherwise, the alternative of failing is not desirable.